Good morning. For anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Abby Freeman, and I have been a member of this church for really quite a long time now. Um, there are so many of us in each of our own clouds of witnesses, and I will start with my maternal grandfather. He was a character, and when he was little, he sang in the boys' choir of the First Presbyterian Church of Philadelphia. Now, that doesn't mean, really mean much, except he always said to us that that's where a lot of the boys for the Philadelphia Boys' Choir came from. And he would come out of his bedroom as we were growing up and we would be visiting, wearing his wife's wig and a very furry Russian hat, singing opera. And so I had my first taste of growing in my faith. I also, um, my mom, when she was a young woman, uh, the church that I grew up in was the one that she belonged to as a young adult. It was not the one she was married in because they were fixing the steeple. But she, as a young woman, would embroider or knit something for every newly married couple and for every newborn born into the congregation. And so my faith grew. Not so much by actual actions, but by what they had done in their actions. Um, my church was very old. I, it's not the oldest in the Presbytery of Philadelphia, but it's up there. And we celebrated our 300th anniversary in 2014. And so as a child growing up, I made multiple trips across Old York Road to go visit the cemetery, which is where the first minister was buried. He was born in the 17th century and was minister in the early part of the 17th century. <clears throat> and it was always an interesting trip. I love cemeteries to this day. They go and you're so, it's so quiet and peaceful. And it was also the only year, was my sixth grade year, that I participated in church choir and the Christmas pageant. And yet, it was a wonderful year. I, some of you probably knew Phil Sorensen, who was out at Fairfax Presbyterian Church. He was the youth leader that year. And so the circle goes round. My father, who grew up where the current president is from, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, or the, the suburbs of Scranton, never missed a day of Sunday school from first grade through 12th grade. How many of you can say that? Not me. And once he was married and was raising a family, he ushered one Sunday a month, every, every year from my entire growing up through my college years until the day he died, even though he claimed he was an agnostic. Yeah. Um, and then there was the Friday, uh, nope, I'm, I'm forgetting my grandmother. My grandmother, my, my dad's mom, um, she didn't get married until what was past prime for her generation. She was born in 1904. And when she was a young adult, she went on a co-ed camping trip with the church. I thought that alone was unusual. And then what was really unusual was the girls spiked the boys hot chocolate with x lax <laughs> And so each part of my family has contributed to my faith journey, <laughs> not necessarily in what you would call traditional. Then there's the Friday night when I was 13, and I'm not sure why I had this on. My sisters had all gone to bed, so it was like eight. And, um, and the TV was on, and it was not something that I would consider watching. It was the Billy Graham revival, which at that time was on once or twice a year. They would be televised. And I took Christ as my savior that night. It's something that I always say in my faith journey, because today I would not be what you would call an evangelical Christian. But there was something about that night and the way he spoke that brought God into my life. Not that he hadn't been there before per se, but it was something that became a reality to me. The very next year was confirmation year, and I don't even remember his name. <clears throat> it was Mr. Something, because in those days you didn't call anybody by their first name. But um, I can see him standing in front of me or the class, and he asked me and about four others to please get up at the end of our confirmation class in the spring before we were actually confirmed and to present our projects to the congregation. And that in and of itself gave me like a, a grounding that my faith was something that was, um, 
what, what do I want? My faith was something that was um, grounded or was real. <clears throat> and so um, he's another part of it. There was also Mary Lee Tatum. I don't know if many of you anymore remember her. She was in this church for maybe five years. <laughs> Ann Mugler just raised her hand. Um, <laughs> she was in the church for maybe five years. She taught down the road at the high school. Um, and she was the leader or the facilitator of the young adults group. Well, I don't know if you could call it the young adults group because even then I was like the youngest person and I, if I wasn't 30, I was really close. But then Kevin Ayers came along and George Kent would come in when he was home from college. So I guess that made it young adults. It merged into the seekers instead where we could look at portions, portions of our faith that were non-traditional and we could talk about them in a non-traditional Bible study way. All of these people molded part of my faith today, but uh, including you guys, each and every one of you I know in some way has contributed to my faith journey and my cloud of witnesses. But one of the ones that currently is a part of my cloud of witnesses the most is my daughter Morgan. She, um, she is well known to many of you. She was part of the youth committee when she was in high school and she was part of the committee that hired Helen and then Diane. And, um, and it's so funny because the summer after she was confirmed in eighth grade, she said, oh, mom, I don't believe in God. And the very next year, she was here doing youth ministry. Um, but she challenges me all the time to broaden my faith, to look at things that are not right in this country and not right in the world, and that my faith should be active in making those things better. And so she's there as, as I try and live into Jesus Christ's responsibility in life to me a little bit better. So if you, if we go into this season of Lent, if you have not been asked to be part of a cloud of witnesses yet, think about doing that. Think about your own story. My stories are not like deep and really hearty, um, faith-based, churchy um, kinds of things, but there are lots of pieces, and you have those pieces too. So think about doing your own witnesses of clouds, even if you don't ever get asked to get up here and stand. Thanks.